Okay, we're going to take a look at how to sketch the graph of this polynomial function uh, that we looked at in a previous example. So here we have this polynomial function in its factored form. We have three linear factors. Uh, we don't need to go ahead and multiply this out into its standard form. Um, we just need to know that if we multiply these three linear factors together, that's going to produce a cubic polynomial function, which will be useful when we talk about the end behavior a little bit later on. But let's first start with the zeros of this function. Uh, we've already found those in a previous example, um, so, but I'll just go ahead and do that again. Uh, the zeros of this function uh, would be negative 2, 1, and 3. Those are the values of x that we find by setting each of these individual linear factors equal to 0 and solving. Now here's the cool thing. These real zeros of this polynomial function are the x-intercepts of its graph. So this graph is going to either touch or cross the x-axis. In this case, it will cross the x-axis at all three of these zeros. So I'm going to go ahead and plot those on the x-axis now. I've marked those points on the graph. I know that's a little bit small, but if you understand what I'm talking about doing here, you should be able to follow along with that. So I've put a point on the x-axis at negative 2, 1, and 3. Those are the zeros of this function. So now we can take this a step further. Now that we've uh, dealt with the zeros, let's go ahead and try to find the y-intercept of this function. The y-intercept being where it crosses the y-axis. We already know where it crosses the x-axis. We could go ahead and mark where it crosses the y-axis as well, assuming that that fits on this graph. And that can simply be found by plugging in 0 for x. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'm trying to find the y-coordinate of this point on the y-axis. So I will plug in 0 for all of the x's, so it's 0 plus 2, and 0 minus 1, and I have 0 minus 3. But that's going to leave me with 2 times negative 1 times negative 3. And 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, and negative 2 times negative 3 would be positive 6. So this point, 0, 6, is the y-intercept of this function. So I will go ahead and plot that on the y-axis at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and I have this point as well. Now again, I know that's a little bit hard to see, but if you're listening to what I'm saying as I'm doing this, you should be able to plot 6 on your y-axis uh, there as well. Now, I already know what the ends do. I'm going to talk a little bit about end behavior on this thing. I said earlier on that since this has three linear factors, if we multiplied this out, this would be a cubic polynomial function. Um, as a matter of fact, with a leading coefficient of positive 1. So a cubic polynomial function with a positive leading coefficient, the left end of the graph will be going down, and the right end of the graph will be going up. So this graph is going to kind of go back and forth between through these points, like this, maybe up, and then back down, and then back down like this. I can add a little bit more accuracy to this if I want to. Again, this is just a rough sketch. Uh, what I'm going to do to try to make this slightly more accurate is I'm going to plug in some other x-coordinates in between here. Like, I already know where it is here at negative 2. I already know where we're at at 0. I know where we're at at 1. I know where we're at at 3. But I don't know where we're at at negative 1 uh, or positive 2. So I'm going to plug those x-values in just to find some additional points. So to find some additional points. Let's try to figure out what the y-coordinate is at negative 1. So I'm going to go ahead and plug negative 1 in for all these x's and see what I get. Negative 1 plus 2, negative 1 minus 1, and negative 1 minus 3. Negative 1 plus 2 would be 1. Negative 1 minus 1 would be negative 2, and negative 1 minus 3 would be negative 4. Multiplying that out, 1 times negative 2 is negative 2, and negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8. So I actually have the point negative 1, 8 that would be on this graph as well. 
I can add that to it, negative 1, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that helps me be a little bit more accurate. I know I come up, I come back down through that point. And now I'm going to try to figure out how low do I go down in here. Again, it's not exactly the minimum value or the relative minimum in there, but it'll at least help me know whether I should do something just like this or whether I should come down a bit further as well. So let's try to find that one. by plugging in that value in between, which is an x value of 2. So let's plug that in and see what we get. We'll have 2 comma something for the coordinate of another point. Um, plugging that in, we have y equals 2 plus 2, there's 2 minus 1, there's 2 minus 3, which gives me 4. 2 minus 1 is 1. 2 minus 3 is negative 1, so 4 times 1, which is 4 times negative 1, which is negative 4. So 2, negative 4 is another point on this graph. So I go over to 2, negative 1, 2, 3, 4. So again, that's not guaranteed to be this local minimum right there, but it just helps make my graph slightly more accurate by picking some points in between. And I have a rough sketch of what this graph, this polynomial function, should look like.